Jobs in archaeology. Okay, I'm going to talk specifically about the archaeology world. Now, there's a whole other entire video that we could do about jobs related to archaeology. What could you do with an archaeology degree? How can you parlay an archaeology degree into something different? And that's a whole other question, another story. For this, this is like specifically you're getting an advanced degree in archaeology. What can you do with it? in the archaeology world. Now, basically, there's three worlds, all right, in, in that very tight archaeology bubble. The first world is the academic world, and that is the cliché, right? The cliché college professor during the year, off on their archaeology project during the summers, you know, writing up their reports, working in their lab, uh, teaching their students, having students go on field schools, all that kind of stuff. That is only 20% of the job market in archaeology, and I would say, if anything, it's falling. That, that cliche, that ultimate thing that so many archaeologists want, it is a rare bird. Still out there, but rare, and you need to be honest about that. That also includes museum jobs. It's like academic and museums. So your dream of working in you know, the local museum in acquisitions or something, that, that, that really academic world, 20%, that's it, right? So as I've said in other videos, and we can talk more at other times, you really need to be able to cast yourself well. You know, you need, you need to know that you, could, that you could make it in that world. You know, that you have the, the chutzpah to make it in that world in order to, to uh, journey forth into that. So 20%, that's it. Now we have 80% left. Okay, the second world of archaeology is, um, I, would, I would basically call it the park service. Now, this can be national parks, this could be state parks, it's the government jobs world. So 30%, about 30% of all archaeology jobs are government jobs. And those government jobs are usually park service related. Like Yosemite is a big place, you need some archaeologists to work there, you know. Death Valley is a big place, you need some archaeologists to work there. So across the United States you have... Um, you have kind of the state archaeologist or you know, the parks archaeologist. And that is, a, that is a true community to itself. And I have uh, a decent amount of friends who've, who've gone into that world, and they, they tend to be pretty happy there. So if you're kind of a more outdoorsy person, if you're into the, uh, the state parks or the national parks or being kind of a park ranger, you know, that, that world of things, that can be a um, satisfying job and uh, has its own interest too. Man, whenever there's a fire, you know, in, in the state park or the national park, it's like, you gotta go out and how are the, how are the archeology span sites after the fire? You know, um, oh, you're building some new cabins or something up. Oh, are they gonna hurt the archeology span sites? Uh, there's so many archeology span sites, we need to update the maps, right? There's a lot there. So that's the second uh, portion in this very insular world of, of very sort of classic archaeology. So that leaves 50%. The last, number three, the last world uh, where you get a job in archaeology is CRM, cultural resource management. So that, that area is so big because it follows construction. So if a um, developer is going to develop a whole new subdivision or something, they need an archaeologist or two or three to survey the land, watch the construction, do a record search beforehand to make sure there wasn't a, uh, a Native American village there before or a, like a historic home from 150 years ago there before. You, you're dealing with cultural resources. The name CRM I never liked because it's just cultural resource management. What is that? It's the idea that the archaeologist is managing these artifacts and sites as a resource, as a resource for all Americans to enjoy and learn from. It all goes back to the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966. That's an, another video for another time, but the fallout is 
there's a lot of employment in that world and it works it works similar to like a law firm in its organization there are different archaeology firms where if you're an archaeologist and you're part of the firm you work on different jobs just like a lawyer will take a certain job or a certain client the archaeologist will too but this also means that you're going to be um, wearing like all the OSHA regulation stuff the hard hat the orange vest all that kind of stuff and you're you're most likely outside a lot of the time you're on the site you're watching construction you're dealing with the construction workers and the crews and the developers and all that stuff you're stopping the project if you find something of significance and you, and you don't stop the project forever but you halt it in order to deal with that cultural resource and then um, you let the project go forward if it makes sense to do so. So that's the sort of archaeology for hire, cultural resource management. A lot of us do it or have done it. I have many, many friends who've made careers in that. I did a decent amount of that before I got my academic job. It's something that graduate students, like in the summers, they'll try and get some CRM work. It, CRM work follows construction, the ebb and flow of construction. It makes sense. You know, so if you're looking for a CRM job in December, good luck. But if you're looking for a CRM job in like May or June, hey, there's a lot, you know. So, and that's it. And the growth, it's if anything, that's the growth industry. If anything, if you're an archaeologist or archaeology major or grad student in archaeology and you also have some business sense, that's an, that's an area that can also be really fulfilling. Now, each area, whether it be kind of cliche, college professor academics or the government job state parks thing or the archaeology for higher CRM thing all of them have kind of their pluses and minuses their yeses their no's and it's up to you to be real honest real honest and cast yourself appropriately for which of those three areas fits you best and is going to make you the happiest